Shalom, Shalom, Yisrael. Worldwide, 12 tribes strong. Um, I want to bring this message because, and this, I've put up a few videos earlier, and uh, I was reminded about something that I said in one of the videos. I was going to explain something about Torah. And uh, so I want to kind of just take out a couple of minutes to do that right now. I want to help you understand something about this thing called the Torah. Now, we have the actual Bible itself, okay? The Bible uh, has in it teachings. And remember, I'm talking to the children of Israel. I'm talking to people uh, who have already rejected um, all the false teachings and false doctrines that are connected with the Constantinian Christian religion. Yeah, so you these, these are people who already know that uh, the Shabbat was never changed. These people already know he didn't die on Friday and got up on Sunday to give you three days and three nights. I mean, we've all that that little elementary kind of weirdness. We already passed that, so we've added we 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 dumped all that to, for truth. And so um, I mentioned a few things about reading your Bible all the way through. Because the word Torah is, there's two things uh, when it comes to Torah that you got to keep in mind. One, over time, the first five books of the Bible uh, began to be known as the Torah because they were considered to be the books of the law. Okay. And the law brings instructions. And so I want you to understand that those first five books carried in it like the instructions for the children of Israel, how we were to live our lives. Um, but the word Torah uh, goes past that. And it, and it includes all of the teachings of Scripture. So, um, of course, you can, you can read that in uh, Luke 24, where the Messiah says, you got to know everything that's written in the law and the prophets and the writings. So you see that the Messiah said it's necessary not just to know the first five books of Moses, but it's also um, required that we learn the whole Bible, that we learn all of what's considered to be the Holy Scripture. OK, but I want to just say this about the Torah that's not oftentimes uh, brought out, and that is that Torah is instructions that are given to us in the text. But Torah is actually how we live. So not only, and, and if you don't catch this the first time around, I want you to think about what I'm saying. Pray about it and, and try to internalize it and maybe come back six months from now after really meditating on what I'm saying to, to see whether or not these things are true. Um, Torah is actually how we live our life out. Now, um, to understand Torah, one needs to understand the people and the culture that the scriptures were written in. It, it just, they go together. And uh, it'll keep you away from falling into a lot of um, false teachings, false doctrines and misunderstandings. Um, if you can take out time to try to actually um, let the mind be in you that was in the mind of the Hamasiah, which was what? A mind of a Hebrew Israelite. It was the mind of a descendant of the Hebrew Israelites. And it was the mind of one that was, that came out of that fourth tribe, Yehuda, right? And, um, it was the mind of one who had been steeped in the culture of the Hebrew, the true Hebrew Israelite. Um, okay, so Torah is then lived out. It's not only taught through scripture, but you also can add to that 
that Torah is taught through nature. It just I just want you to grab the concept first. And then as you study, like I said, it might take you six months for this to sink in. But um, I think one of the things that is that gives misunderstanding to Torah is when you separate people from land and separate people from soil and separate people from plants, separating people from animals, when you separate people from trees, when you separate people from mountains, when you separate people from rivers, when you separate people from even looking up into the sky at night or looking up into the sky during the day and seeing clouds. When you separate people from the soil and all the things I just mentioned, then it's difficult sometimes to explain a lot of the concepts that are in the Torah and also some of the concepts that you find uh, what some people consider in the New Testament. And um, they say, well, that's the reason why Messiah spoke in parables was because he was trying to explain concepts. Uh, yes, that's true. He was getting, he was actually, those parables that he used were, um, it is Torah. You get that? Those parables are Torah because that's how Torah is taught. Torah is more than just a classroom experience. Torah is watching what the Most High is doing, right? throughout our creation to help us understand what he's doing with us as people. So um, if you live in the city um, and you're listening to this, I want you to, to understand that you're going to need to go into the country every now and then to observe some stuff to get a better understanding um, of scripture. And I'm gonna, uh, and if you're in the country, even if you're in the country, you're still going to have to go outside and look around. You're going to have to start doing some of these things to understand the concept. I'm, I've got a couple of minutes, so I'm going to do this with this quick video. Um, when you look out your window in the morning and you can see the sun rising um, on the horizon, you see the sun on the horizon, um, that particular time, that picture, is, is, is Torah. It's a part of Torah. It's part of Yah trying to teach you something. When you plant seeds and you watch a seed actually grow, you go through the whole process of putting the seed in the ground, covering it, watering it, waiting, then watching it come forth and then work its way to maturity. And the whole process of taking care of that seed and and trimming the seed or we are um, thinning the seeds or having to, we, that whole process that you go through from seed to fruit, you got to see what it's like in time, in real time, because it's weeks and weeks and weeks. And you've got to actually taste the fruit of your labor because once you put the seed in to the time you actually eat something, there's a process there. And during that process, you're learning Torah. If you have chickens and you start from a baby chick and you work up to there and start laying eggs or and then they have baby chicks and you see that whole process, you've seen something in Torah. There's a picture that he's trying to teach you. And um, we're at that time of a year where, I mean, raising a sheep, you can do the same thing. So um, traveling down a path, fishing on the water, catching fish, the process of mending nets, all of those things were not just stories. What he was doing was revealing Torah because Torah is the life also of the Hebrew Israelite. It's not just the, it's just not the classroom experience. It's the working out of, of, of what we learn in life. And how and how how life works to those during that time period. And also there's still some people who live pretty much like that today. And the reason that I mention that is because sometimes you can get a proper understanding of things if you can just go outside and look around. 
So somebody is arguing with you about something or somebody brings something up and they say this verse means this and this is this, this and that. And then you go, okay, but, <laughs> you know, I have people arguing with me about the, about the uh, the date of the Passover because I don't, I don't get into these arguments with people. But I try to explain to them, all right, um, your calendar, whether it's the right one or not, if if included in that, in in your calendar, if you don't have a wave offering, which is for the first fruit, it's a, it's a first fruit offering. If you don't have that to wave, then you keeping that feast in the wrong season. Well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that, brother? Uh, I live in the country and I know that part of that feast is the feast of first fruits, fruit, not first shoot, not first leave first fruit, which means that you can't have the feast of first fruit if that wheat or barley has not yet put on fruit. Do you get it? So he keeps you in season. That's why he said I'm, I, you must keep this feast in its season. So I said, well, it's the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth. I mean, hold on. There's a feast connected with Passover called first fruit. So if there's no fruit showing, then you cannot be keeping that feast during the right time. See how simple that is? Just go outside and observe it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that was just an example that just popped into my head. I, there's way too many more of those examples that, that I could use just growing up in the country. Like I understand the whole idea of plant seed, wayside and uh, stony ground, uh, weeds, you know, good soil. Why? Because I've done it. I know how the enemies come in. I know how it is to plant seeds and then leave and then come back. And this is a bunch of other kind of seeds in the ground growing up next to that one. Like, whoa, what's that all about? Why well, I'm doing it. I see how difficult it is to try to raise livestock and the enemies within, how they fight each other and how there's enemies without wolves, coyotes, foxes, snakes, badgers. Uh, what else we got out here? Raccoons. Always. So you're in this weird place and then you got to constantly feed and you got to constantly look. So it helps understand Torah. Now, my wife told me, they said, we need some sheep. I said, oh, my goodness, again. But then I started thinking about what she was saying. There's there, there's got to be a lesson in raising sheep because that's what the children of Israel did. So am I saying that you got to have sheep to know the Bible? No, that's not my point. My point is Torah is not just book and classroom. Torah is also outside observation and application. So that you will begin to understand when Rabbi Shaul said the very creation, you know, is preaching. Matter of fact, he got that from the Old Testament and he got it from David, who said the very creation is teaching us. And David got it from the Torah. It says that the very creation is teaching us. So, as I said, I just want you to see that that the teachings of the scripture are also connected with the natural things in the world. And so the, the closer we can get to how the natural things of the world operate and how they function and how they relate to each other, um, it will help us get a deeper understanding of Torah and will also keep us from getting caught up into a lot of things and false teachings and doctrines that we don't have to get caught up in. I hope this little video was helpful for somebody um, and hopefully it'll motivate you to go outside and spend a little time. I think that's one of the reasons why we have the, the Feast of Tabernacles so that um, you know we can get out of our comfort zone and go spend a little time you know, in nature if it's all possible to pick up some of those uh, um, those truths that sometimes it's difficult to see if you live in the concrete jungle. Hopefully this has been a blessing to the worldwide house of Yisrael. Shalom. Yeah.